Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna cover that recent lymphoma and tattoo study, which I feel like people either haven't heard about, they heard about and got really freaked out about, or they're just completely ignoring it. So we're gonna take a more detailed look and see what they actually found in terms of that increased risk of lymphoma, that type of cancer, for people who have tattoos versus people that don't have tattoos. And there's definitely a lot of nuance in the study. If we actually look at the numbers, there's a few wait a, wait a minute moments. Who are you? But then there's also a few oh crap moments and one of those has to do with people who got laser tattoo removal. We're gonna talk about the mechanism of why that might be more of a concern. And this is also a great opportunity to look at our lymphatic system, which is absolutely fascinating. Most people don't know how it works and it's important to know how it works. And then also just look and see if there are any solutions out there for lowering this potential risk in terms of what's actually in tattoo inks, et cetera. So let's just go. Okay, let's start by doing a little bit of background framing uh, right off the bat. I'm a virgin. Why do you find that so believable? I'm talking about a tattoo virgin. I don't have any tattoos, but I've really wanted to get one for a long time. I just haven't thought of an idea that's cool enough to sort of break the seal. So while this isn't a normal like plant-based health or vegan related video, uh, I was just really curious about this. So I had to do a deep dive for my own concern. And I do also feel like vegans have like twice as many tattoos as the average population. So if you're a vegan watching this and only watch my vegan content, keep watching. <laughs> yeah, I think tattooing is an awesome art. I'm personally very attracted to people with tattoos. And so I wanna keep a level head about this, not just fear monger and, and never support any tattoo artist again. Ultimately lead to having less hot tattooed people out there. I mean, that would be a real tragedy. But it is worth mentioning that tattoos have become much more popular in recent years, especially in the US, climbing to 32% of US adults and 46% of US adults from ages 30 to 49. And that's from a Pew Research survey. So. Pew pew, just shot you with some statistics. That's my new slogan. Okay, we're gonna bounce to the study results and then learn some more basics about the lymph system because that's the only way any of this makes sense. And yeah, this is a study from late July, very recent out of Sweden and it found overall that people who have tattoos have about a 20% increased risk of lymphoma. That's from looking at 1400 cases of people with lymphoma and then 4,200 controls. And we'll get more into those study details, but now let's just rapid fire how the lymphatic system even works because I'm quite sure that 80 to 90% of people don't actually know. First of all, this is a subsystem of the circulatory system and the immune system because it is involved in circulation, it connects to the circulatory system, but it also has immune cells. We create immune cells in the lymphatic system. Essentially, we have these spaces in our body where our veins and our arteries branch out and they meet, and that is where the lymph system picks up various crap. Now, a lot of things that aren't supposed to be there, whether it be bacteria, toxins, etc., and then it puts it through its own lymph drainage system, these one-way canals that lead to a network of about 800 lymph nodes, which are loaded with various immune cells. Now, these are like little waste treatment centers, and then they all funnel and lead back into two larger veins above your heart, goes back into your heart. And while the system includes other organs like the thymus gland, etc., you can see from this chart, for the purposes of tattoos and the concern there, we're really focused on those lymph nodes and what happens before the lymph nodes. And this is where tattoos come in. And the reason that tattoos largely work is because you're embedding ink particles that are just large enough so that you can't carry them through your lymph system easily to your lymph nodes, etc. So you end up with the ink being left there and you get an image, but that doesn't mean that your lymph system isn't able to flush some of the smaller ink particles that are there. And in fact, we know that they do flush them out. And this is where my mind was blown because it turns out that when you're getting a tattoo on your skin, you may also be getting a tattoo on your lymph nodes in the sense that that ink can be making it to your lymph nodes and actually stain it darker. It's unclear for how long this lasts, probably not as long as the tattoo, but we don't know. But from animal models, we know that about 30% of the ink is quite rapidly cleared out from the area and then we're losing about 80% of the ink over decades. And for people that are fascinated and just to prove it, gross image of <laughs> lymph nodes that are stained in three, two, 
one. Uh, yeah, you can see it right there. It's clearly tattoo ink in that lymph node. Okay, image gone. So yeah, we have several studies showing that lymph nodes can get inked as well. It's not every day that a lymph node is accepted into Hell's Angels, but with this ink, they welcomed me with open arms. Hop on the back of my hog, Rhonda. <laughs> but this led to a paper literally being called, what color is your lymph node? Talking about what dye color you might have there. It's also to the point where these stained lymph nodes can be misclassified as melanoma, straight up misdiagnosed during surgery. And this is one red flag that I think led these Swedish researchers to investigate this at all. They say, quote, deposition of tattoo pigment in lymph nodes has been confirmed, but the long-term health effects remain unexplored. So all the researchers got together and got one of those compass tattoos, got to exploring and started doing the research. Now let's get back to those results and more of the study. Yes, again, we're talking about a 20% increased risk for tattoos versus no tattoos for all different types of lymphoma combined. And you might be thinking, ah, oh, 20%, not that big of a deal. I would say this is another situation where it's like red meat, where it's not like a tripling in risk, but it's still something to be concerned about. However, the red meat one is even more of a concern because colorectal cancer is more common. Also in that case, that result has been reproduced over and over again. And this appears to be the first time we have these findings. So of course we need more studies, which is why oftentimes the most important line of the study is the last sentence. And the last sentence of this one is quote, causality cannot be conferred from a single epidemiological study and the results need to be confirmed by further research. Yet this still remains a concerning signal. We've studied skin cancer rates and tattoos thinking, oh, you know, you're literally tattooing right on that skin is something happening and we haven't got a signal like this. And when it comes to causality, oftentimes we're looking to the Bradford Hill criteria for causality. We don't have enough studies here to really answer it. And the study already has some weaknesses in terms of the Bradford Hill criteria, even as a single study. And one of the most obvious ones of that is biological gradient in which if you're gonna be exposed to more of something, you should see more of that risk if it truly is causing something. And in this case, it has to do with the area of tattoos. And it broke this down into two groups, people who had more than a palm surface worth of tattoos and those that had less than a palm surface worth. And they found a weird thing. And that was that the people who had more area actually had less risk. So more exposure to what we're concerned causes cancer here somehow led to lower risk. I tried thinking really hard about this and the best answer I came up with was that people might be getting larger format tattoos on say like their extremities further away from major lymph node centers and maybe that would lower the risk, I don't know. Or that perhaps people with more area have the money to get more tattoos, I guess, and therefore have a higher socioeconomic status and are healthier in other ways, have better access to medical care. I don't know, I'm stretching really far here. And then we have another interesting phenomenon that's happening, and it's sort of screwing with our time order that we expect to see with causality, where you know, you're exposed to something for longer and you therefore have a higher risk. Well, this is a situation where the strongest signal for cancer here was in people who had a tattoo within the last two years and the relationship was essentially lost entirely for people who had a tattoo between three and 10 years ago or 11 or greater years ago. This could mean a few things, but it's weird either way. The best explanation I can think of is that within the first two years of getting a tattoo, you have that flush of 30% of the ink going into your lymph cells or however much actually makes it there. You know, and maybe that can lead to the lymphoma, but the only explanation for that not also being picked up for the longer term ones is that people are getting lymphoma and then maybe it's resolving but that's still kind of weird. And those were just undetected cases. Honestly, my mind is getting a little bit jumbled trying to figure out how that would work in any way. So yeah, put your brains together and get in the comment section if you have an idea for that one. But as for that biological gradient, just to contrast it in terms of smoking and lymphoma, we do see a very sensible, more smoking, more lymphoma risk relationship. And this is where we should just get more into the potential mechanism here because there is biological plausibility here for sure. And that brings us to the various potential carcinogens that are in ink of different types. From the study, tattoo ink often contains carcinogenic chemicals, primarily aromatic amines, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and metals, we're talking heavy metals. Black ink generally uses black carbon, which is 
more or less like a more refined version of soot and can have contaminants. Its main concern is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which as you may know, are also a carcinogen in cooked meat and cigarettes. So those are two very much explored and studied carcinogens. And so a study estimated that you're getting about 400 micrograms of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons per tattoo. And this autopsy a study looked at actual tattoo content of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and lymph nodes. And they found that the concentrations ranged from 0.1 to 0.6 in the tattooed skin, but 0.1 to 11.8 in the lymph nodes. So the upper range that they found for lymph nodes was like 20 times higher than they found for tattoos. However, I don't think the study really did enough to determine what was coming from smoking or tattoos, even though it was a tattoo focused study. While they did compare lymph nodes that were very close to the tattooed skin, I think they should have added some further away lymph nodes to see what we're looking at. But polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons can lead to oxidative damage, of course that damages DNA as cells replicate, they can lead to cancer. And it also might immune evade. Quote, exposure to some polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons is associated with reduced immune surveillance or immunosuppression of cancer cells. So less immune ability to fight cancer cells. And this is interesting from the study as well because they did compare black ink versus black and colored ink. If you're gonna put one tattoo up against the other one, if one has color in it, I'd think it would have less black ink, maybe I'm wrong. But when they broke it down in terms of those different types of tattoos, only the black only tattoos reached statistical significantly higher risk of lymphoma, the black and color ones did not. And in addition to polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, we also have you know, heavy metal concern as well as preservatives. And from this large 2015 EU report, they say the highest risk was still for polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons with 40% being over compliance level. And in 2022, they started regulating inks more with REACH, which was supposed to get the contamination levels lower. But REACH was in 2022 and we will see if ink is cleaner in the future but for the u.s as pbs said in 2023 quote tattoo ink is totally unregulated in the united states although the fda has recently proposed guidelines and we have to get back to the size issue here because from this autopsy study they're saying hey it's those smaller particles even nanoparticles that are making it into the lymph nodes which of course they concern and this brings me to another thing that the study looked at and that was a laser tattoo removal and the results here Honestly, to me, a bit more concerning than the rest of the study, and that is because people who had laser tattoo removal had about three times, or they had a 300% risk compared to just that 20% risk for tattoo versus not tattoo, so way more. And this is, of course, becoming way more accessible as a treatment, and with over 20% of people regretting at least one tattoo, uh, yeah, this is a big industry. So what's actually going on here? Well, the laser doesn't just melt the tattoo into the ether. It's largely breaking the tattoo down into smaller particles as well as causing some inflammation to the point where your immune system, your immune cells can drain that stuff out through your lymph system. So you're essentially getting a mega blast of the ink into your lymph system. So not just 30%, like when you get your tattoo, but we're talking 100% over the course of the treatments. And it's also the case that the laser light itself can alter the ink chemicals. From the study, these results align with evidence from experimental studies demonstrating cleavage of azo compounds in tattoo ink and do carcinogenic aromatic amines. So I think we should even consider slowing down the tattoo removal process and perhaps doing toxicology studies of the ink. That might be a little extra. Maybe just covering tattoos would even be safer, even though you're putting more ink in your body, which is, no, this is all quite a bit of speculation and why I'll say again that we need more studies. So this brings me to what can be done to potentially lower the risk of anything bad happening with tattoos. Well, we're starting to see some polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon free advertised ink. And so that's interesting. I would love to see studies comparing those to ones with it. But I think in general, if we really care about this issue, we just need to do more studies and we need to look even further into to the compounds in these ink, and then of course come up with better regulations. Because in the US, the regulations are essentially just 
around not getting infections during the actual tattoo process, things like that. And another perspective here that I had to explore was, hey, does diet play a role here? You know, that's what this channel is largely about. And it does appear that antioxidants have a huge impact looking to various studies on fruit and vegetable consumption and lymphoma like this one. Higher fruits and vegetables was associated with about 40% lower risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in women compared to low intake. Also that intake of fiber from veggies was related to a reduced risk of about 46%. And then we have another study showing that, yeah, high intake of green leafy vegetables was, was associated with about 40 to 60% lower rate of various lower rate of various lymphomas quite a ways throughout our body. So very clearly they're making it into your lymphatic system as well. And get this, certain antioxidants in lymph fluid may be higher than blood level since lymph vessels can absorb certain antioxidants directly from intestines like vitamin E. So if they are around when you have something causing oxidative stress, whether it is ink or some other toxic element or just time and metabolic stress within your lymph nodes themselves, the more you can buffer that, the better it's gonna be. And that's why we're getting these results likely. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the future, right after people get tattoos or when they're getting laser tattoo removal, they might be advised to like cram down, slam down antioxidants. And that's why I'm starting my new Lymph life antioxidant diet for tattoo getters. In the end, it's very clear that we need more studies on this topic from more areas of the world, more research and more pressure to clean up the ink supply as well. Because at the end of the day, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are carcinogens and they should be lowered anyway. Another solution could be to really refine the particle size in inks. If we have ones that are too small nanoparticles to start with, that's probably gonna increase the amount that's a cleared out. So it's actually would lead to a more solid tattoo perhaps, and then also lower the amount that the lymph nodes are being exposed to. And I would say even more urgently than general tattoos, we need more studies on laser tattoo removal because there's way more of that strong signal here for risk. And I'm still in the position where I want to get a tattoo. I think they look cool. So I'm like, what do I do here? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, based on the whole surface area thing, maybe I need, I just need to get a whole sleeve so I don't get the increased risk, which again exposes how kind of fishy, iffy this study is. Sorry, fish. Didn't mean to be offensive to fish. But yeah, there's a lot going on here. So let me know down below if you have any insights into this, if you're a tattoo enthusiast and just know something I don't or didn't mention, feel free to drop it down below. Of course, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.